Hello my soccer universe. I have a completely new setup here in my office and I have not yet quite figured out how to do the camera so bear with me on that one. Now my notes are above the camera so if I look like this I'm looking at my notes. Just bear with me. Uh, since the last time we did a Serie A review it was actually a very negative video with Milan just having lost the derby. Three wins later I'm a little bit more optimistic again. Um, I also want to focus now a little bit more on the major storylines and then only briefly run through results from these past three rounds. I've made shorts on most of these, so you can check those out as well. Uh, as I said, Milan look good. Uh, they also look good because Inter managed to lose uh, at home to Sassolo in the midweek, a game that was A, entertaining, but B, where the result came totally out of nowhere because Inter have been looking imperious at times. And they proved this again in their 4-0 away win at Salernitana with Lautaro coming off the bench at the hour mark and scoring four and most of them one touch goals. Really, really amazing stuff. He might be the best player in the league at this very moment. Yes, Leao, if he keeps it up, could be up there. The other one with would be, of course, uh, Victor Osimen, who has been in a whole scandal on his own. Speaking TikTok where the club, the club, pulled out some TikTok posts that were A, racist and B, mocking him. Of course, uh, Radio Silence, and this comes on the heels of him being subbed off um, in a nil-nil against Bologna where he missed the penalty and then kind of asking the coach, why don't you put up two strikers? We need to win this frigging game. Uh, but I think all that this storm did was actually galvanize Na Napoli. Yes, there was a very unconvincing non-apologetic statement by Napoli, which I think is pretty bad look for them. Uh, but Oziman says, I have nothing against the fans, although he removed all his pictures in a Napoli shirt there. But I think he wanted to make a point for the club. And then he said, you know, I really love the fans here and Napoli is the, in my heart. Still doesn't seem super happy overall. However, Napoli seemingly have used this controversy to kick into the next gear, having now scored eight goals in two games and Quaratskelia looking quite good as well. Uh, the Lecce story took a little bit of a nose dive. Uh, now they have played two uh, bigger teams and yeah, I've lost both of them. So uh, Juve and Napoli. I guess Lecce might not be implicated into relegation, uh, but I think their story is very much over. Speaking of Juve, the last time we talked about them, they looked really good and then they pulled in one bad performance after another. I mean, Sassuolo, who beat Inter uh, also, then uh, on the heels of it, they beat Juve 4 2 deservedly, so in a highly entertaining game. Really, this was a super entertaining game to watch uh, with so many blunders in defensively on the Juve side, uh, especially the one nil by Chesney, but also then the last goal where he plays out from the from the back. And I think it was Gatti who then uh, puts it into his own net because Chesney didn't uh, bother to run back and he didn't look. So uh, not good. On the other side, I think he is as finding form, but Juve is still very much shaky. And I doubt at this moment that they really can do a Scudetto challenge, even if they have no European commitments. Um, but hey, Inter look definitely the strongest and I think that even Milan might be better than Juve. And if Napoli continue the form, I think we have three teams that I would consider ahead of Juve. I have not talked about any of the Roman teams so far because they are just horrific. Lazio cannot get any foot right at the moment. Uh, and they were outplayed by Milan on the weekend. Uh, I think the only thing that uh, they are nurturing so far is the goal from Providell in the Champions League. Uh, there's a lot of unrest with Lotito, the club chef, uh, basically doing transfer business by himself, uh, not getting the players that Sari wanted. Sari complaining left and right, too many games, blah, blah, blah. They also lost quite some players, so uh, the defensive structure for Lazio is definitely gone. And Roma... I mean, they looked really bad when they lost to Genoa 4-1. Yes, it could have been 2-2. And yes, Lukaku at least is scoring for them. But Roma looked like a real mess at this very, 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 very moment. And the Mourinho magic is gone. He now starts with this spiel that, you know, respect, respect. Um, yes, this is the worst start I ever had. 
or the worst start uh, in my Roma career. But this is also the last um, Roma has not reached two consecutive finals in a row. And in his mind, he has not lost any of these finals. Technically, that's true, but he has only one trophy to show. So yeah, uh, Roma is a little bit of a worry. <laughs> At least they've re released a beautiful third jersey in uh, black. Um, really like that one. So yeah, those are my major storylines from more or less all the big teams. Let's run quickly through the results. And I want to start with the round from uh, the previous weekend, which was around five. Uh, where Milan had a bounce back win 1-0 over Elas Verona, early goal by Leao, they played in the New Georgias, but not much to talk home about. I already mentioned a little bit about the fun game between Sassuolo and Juve. Uh, <laughs> I mean, as I said, the defensive errors. Juve though found themselves twice a level again, and especially when they hit it 2-2 through Chiesa in the 78, I really thought they will uh, hang on to that, but Pinamonti scores one. And then I said the own goal. Uh, I think it was uh, through Gatti at the, at the end. Perati, who of course wanted to go to Juve, being really good there. We already mentioned Bologna against Napoli, uh, mainly because of the Ozeman versus Rudy Garcia meltdown. They did not really look good. Uh, Ozeman missed the penalty. I think they even hit uh, the woodwork early on. Uh, at this point, we were all thinking that Nap Napoli might a little bit uh, in trouble. And Roma cannot hold on to a 1-0 lead through Lukaku at Torino, um, who get the equalizer through Zapata. Uh, Inter, of course, won in that round as well uh, through a really, really good goal by Di Marco and should have won by a whole lot more against Empoli. Then we had the midweek round, Juve, a very unconvincing 1-0 win over Lecce, but I think I was a little bit more uh, this disappointed on how little uh, Lecce were showing. Milan's 3-1 against Cagliari was actually quite impressive because not only was their ro rotation, they played well. They went then down uh, through Luvumbo uh, at a point where I then thought, oh, if they get a second, this could go pear-shaped, although I think they were playing well. But Okafor and Tomori turned it around before the half with uh, some nicely played goals. Yes, it was not then, you know, it was always a bounce in between. But Pulisic uh, provided a well there and then a great goal by Loftus-Cheek, I think. I actually like that performance uh, because a color is not an easy place to go to. In the evening, of course, we had the interloss to uh, Sassuolo. They were 1-0 up through Dumfries, but uh, it was already a little bit of a shaky lead, it has to be, to be said. And then by Rami, yes, this was a goalkeeping mistake by uh, Sommer. But the Parati shot, that, that was great. And honestly, in, in the end, Sassuolo really deserved that win. I was a little bit disappointed by Inter there. This was one of the performances that Inter always have in there. I was also shocked when I saw David Klassen come coming out. That was a transfer that completely passed me by, to be honest. Um, we also had, of course, Napoli bouncing back. Big win, Osimen scoring, giving a penalty to... Uh, um, uh, to Zielinski early, uh, early on to, not, uh, to kind of stave off the criticism of Rudy Garcia said you take it you you take it and then Kvaratskhelia's celebration after he made his first goal of the season really said okay this is now Napoli unleashed again uh, oh he's unleashed and that might bode well and then Simeone also scoring and what I like with Napoli is not only one player scoring it's uh, they spread it out a whole lot uh, and we already talked talked about 4-1 of Genoa against Roma, which was the other great result. Uh, it was 1-1 in the 26th, I mean, but Retegi, uh, yeah, the Argentinian guy who plays for Italy, uh, gets it back. Then Thorsby uh, makes make, make, make the 3 74th, and Messias, Juni Messias coming from Milan, also adds one. Uh, as I said, there was a goal for uh, Roma in, in there, but it was a pretty clear offside in the end. And then on the past weekend, we had, uh, of course, Lecce losing at home 4 0 to Napoli. Um, first two headers by Östigard and Osimen, and then laid on Gaetano, who is a youth team pro product. He just came on with his more or less with the first touch, he scores, and Politano makes it a route. But I think it, there was this difference between the two teams. As I said, Lecce coming a little bit down. Milan, especially in the second half, were really convincing again against Lazio. Yes, everyone wins against Lazio, but Leao was his unplayable self, assisting the Pulisic goal really, really nicely, and then also the Okafor goal laid on. This should have been more than the two goals. This was a really good Milan performance. I actually enjoyed watching that. 
Um, unfortunately, Lusk at the same time were losing as it's usually my Saturdays these days. I hate European <laughs> when everything has to be squeezed together. But just when you thought that, you know, Inter might, might be under pressure, they show up in Salerno and as I said, Lautaro Martino scoring four in 60 minutes coming off the bench. This has never happened before in Italy. It's a really impressive feat. And I think especially, was it his first or second goal? He just lobs the goalie. He does not uh, go for a shot. He lobs it. It's brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff that Lautaro were doing. And as I said, Inter, I think at the moment, have to be unfortunately considered, fortunately, since I'm a Milan fan, as the best team in Italy. They look, they look really imperious overall. Imperious was also the choreography uh, from the... Salerno fans celebrating uh, Pink Floyd of all. They, they were sh celebrating Dark Side of the Moon, but it, they had uh, two heads from the division bell up there. They had the wall in there, of course, and they showed also the prison. It was glorious. As a Floyd fan myself, this was really, really great to see uh, this TIFO. Um, other games we had here, yeah, Atalanta, Juve. I actually, and I was happy that I was not focusing on This was not a good game. Uh, I thought that you were a teeny bit better in the first half, second half, it was more Atalanta than Jason than were, I was keeping uh, the draw, especially with a great save after a uh, cook minus free kick, I think it was, but yeah, not much to talk home about. Roma get a win, bounce back win again, Lukaku and Pellegrino scoring, and then yesterday, Sassuolo, who just had beaten Juvent, Inter, of course, they lose at home to Monza, and Fiorentina 3-0 over Cagliari, which kind of means Cagliari, yeah, they will struggle to stay in, in the league, and I'm for, uh, sad for my colleague saying so. Here are the standings. The two Milan clubs up top. I think Napoli I will get into, into the mix. They still have the head-to-heads. You were hanging up there, but so unconvincing. And Fiorentina also. Being there, Atalanta, I think those are the other are the teams uh, that probably will go for the European spots with the Roman team so f faltering. The bottom three look like the bottom three at the moment i'm i'm sorry sorry to say uh but also udinese is not quite out, out of yet you see a clear cut there from you udinese down i would say atalanta up and Ud udinese down european spots and rele relegation everything in between might you need to go on a run uh to get it uh, to get in there and we can also see in the expected stand standings you know inter are still the overwhelming famous milan napoli in there um in the championship thing, I think we'll be for the fourth place very good tight. Empoli, Sanitano, Cagliari at the moment, the ones going down. Upcoming round, um, nothing really that outstanding. Maybe Lazio against Atalanta, but given how Lazio are playing at the moment, I'm no, not sure. I think Genoa will give Milan a run for, for the money. Inter against Bologna. In Bologna, that has been a tight ma ma matchup away from Bologna. Uh, Inter have been winning that all always quite comfortably and yes there's a little matter of a Turin derby but whenever you think the Torino could win it they always manage to lose to Juve so I honestly don't see it I actually think a Napoli Fiorentina might be the most exciting matchup but then Napoli will play Real Madrid soon so we'll see any case those are my thoughts from Serie A please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I'll talk to you soon bye Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day, bye!